Hello and welcome to the solution run through for sailing by my dad Belal and myself the pedaling pianist. Now the puzzle on screen is not sailing, it's leakage by Testarossa um, released in January this year. It is absolutely brilliant as you can tell from the 100% approval rating from 58 solvers. Um, that's amazing. Um, my dad and I both solved it and we both really enjoyed it, I can highly recommend it. And it includes this rule set. Digits in the first row show the number of filled cells in their column. Digits in the first column show the number of filled cells in their row. And as you go through the solution path to this puzzle, you realise, or at least I realise, maybe some solvers knew this already, um, but you realise that um, there is a secret to this rule set that isn't immediately obvious at first. But once you realise it, it makes solving it a lot more smooth and um, yeah, it's a fantastic, satisfying um, experience solving this puzzle. So my dad and I wondered what would happen if you combined this rule set that we call the filler rule set, I don't know if there's a more official term for it, uh, what would happen if you combined it with yin yang, which is of course another rule set that involves shading some cells in the grid. It turns out it's very, very fascinating what happens when you combine those two rule sets. There are some very interesting restrictions that arise from that. One of which is, spoiler alert, that in an n by n grid where n is odd, with these rules, row 1, column 1 is always n. And what that means is that we, may, we could create this. My, it was my dad's idea to do this, <laughs> and I think it's brilliant. The entire grid is fog, um, and because of the implications of the rule set, it's not easy to prove at all, but you can prove that row 1, column 1 is a 9, and it always will be with these rule sets, um, which we thought was brilliant. Um, and we were so excited to publish this puzzle um, far and wide. Um, I made a solution guide. I also put it in the puzzle testing submissions channel in the... Uh, cracking the cryptic discord server and it was solved by i think a couple of people um there who gave some pretty detailed feedback one of which was a user by the name of top autism who explained in detail their um solution path and actually the way that they proved that row one column one was a nine was completely different to the way that i proved it in this solution guide um that i've i've put up there um and their way is probably no it is it is smoother it doesn't reveal other kind of secrets of the rule sets as it goes along unlike the the um the proof that my uh, my proof does um because that, that kind of tells you a lot about how certain cells in the grid are going to behave um however um, it was a very, very smooth proof, and that's the proof that I'm going to use in this video because I've already done the other proof in the other solution guide. Anyway, we were very, very excited about this, um, and it's been solved lots of times. It's got some really, really complimentary comments as well, um, and yeah, it was wonderful. And so what it meant is that sailing, which happened, which was constructed around the same time, and it has essentially the same rules except the grid is not covered in fog we weren't so excited about this at the time um because it doesn't have this novelty of, of the grid being covered in fog um it just felt like a little bit of a kind of byproduct of the main event which was foghuku guards um so yeah we didn't really push it as much and obviously it's only been solved six times instead of 43 um but still Within those six solvers, there have been some, well, two very, very complimentary comments about it. So the more I look back on this puzzle, the more I start to think maybe this is the best puzzle that I've ever been involved in constructing, if I do say so myself. So I'm very excited to get this solution guide out and share this puzzle with you. Um, hopefully you enjoy it too. Let's jump straight into it. And as I said, I'm going to use... Um, top autism's method of proving that this is a nine but before we do that actually there is one small deduction you can make first which is to do with column four um, now this balance line is telling us that some shaded cells on the line sum to the same as the unshaded cells on the line and um, that means that if you know the secret this is going to have to be an odd number and once you do the maths because this number is describing how many shaded cells there are in this column once you do the maths you realize that this only has two options it can only be three or five and it can only be three 
if this cell is unshaded so that there are three shaded cells in this column to do the balancing. Now let's go into the proof of why um, row 1, column 1 is a 9. And in order to do that, I'm going to do the classic um, yin-yang example shape that, um, that everybody loves to do. Whoops. Um, I always use green and yellow, uh, green for shaded, yellow for unshaded. I think with all of the other colours going on in the grid, that's probably the, the best option. Um, apologies if it does cause any problems. Anyway, because yin is always one orthogonally connected area and yang is also one orthogonally connected area, it must always be possible to draw one single line that divides the two, one dividing line between yin and yang, which I'm going to try and do as quickly as possible. And we know a few properties of this line. First of all, it can never travel diagonally. It's always travelling orthogonally. Hopefully it's clear that one cell cannot simultaneously be yin and yang. And another is that it visits all 64 of the internal 8 by 8 grid of points. What do I mean by that? So um, in here, in the middle of these four cells, is this point here, the kind of point at which four cell borders intersect. Um, now there are 64 such points in the grid. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight along the top row, and then eight along each column. Eight by eight, 64. If we didn't visit one of those um, points, let's say the um, dividing line between yin and yang did that instead, well the implication of that is that this is shaded and that creates two by two squares of shaded cells. If we visited the same um, cell twice, uh, sorry, the same point on the internal 8x8 grid twice, so we did something like that and then later on we did something like that, um, then the implication of that is that this is the opposite of those two, which is the opposite of that. And we can never, whoops, why is that red? Um, we can never have this checkerboard pattern. If you're familiar with yin yang, you probably know that we can't have this checkerboard pattern because that causes connectivity issues. So we can conclude that um, the dividing line between yin and yang must visit all 64 points in the internal 8x8 grid of points um, in the 9x9 grid. Um, now, if we imagine this 8x8 grid of points as a chessboard with white points and black points, then because we know that the line is always going to travel orthogonally, we we must always have uh, we must make sure that the line always goes from a white point to a black point. The line will always go from a white point to a black point, um, and vice versa. So, because there are an even number of points in total, 64 points, it will always enter the internal 8x8 grid on a white point or well, or a black point, and it will leave on the opposite colour point if this is a chessboard, if that makes sense. Um, so, yes, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the secret. Um, I don't know if I've explained it nearly as well as Top Autism explained it, but um, we're going to go with that. Hopefully, given that this is a solution run through, I'm not going to try and repeat myself or make myself any clearer for now. Anyway, let's bank that information for now and let's see what happens when we put any digit other than 9 in row 1, column 1. Let's say we put a 6 in there. Now, because of the yin-yang border rule, which is that um, around the border there must be at most one connected string of shaded cells and one connected string of unshaded cells. Um, there are two options for how we can make this six work, because it's describing the number of shaded cells in the row and the number of shaded cells in the column. So one is that we do that, and because of the yin yang border rule, all of these become um, unshaded as well. Now hopefully you can see that this is a problem, because the um, the dividing line between yin and yang has entered and will leave the internal 8x8 eight eight grid on two points that are a bishop's move away from each other, um, and therefore they must be on the same bishop's colour point um, in that internal 8x8 eight eight grid. So this is never valid in yin yang. You can never create a valid yin yang grid um, when you paint the border like this. 
Um, there is another way that we can make this six clue work, and that is if we get rid of all of those and we do the last six cells in the row and in the column. We connect those up like that and we make this the unshaded um, portion of the border. But again, the dividing line between yin and yang enters and leaves the grid on two points that are a bishop's um, move away from each other and therefore on the same colour point within the 8x8 grid. Um, and that just does not work. And that will be the case, hopefully you will see that that will be the case for any of the digits 1 to 8 when we put that in this cell. Um, because it will always create this kind of symmetrical L shape of either shaded or unshaded cells um, around row 1, column 1. So the only way we can get around that is if we put a 9 in this square, this cell, and we shade all of those, well, we still have the same problem, don't we? Which is that we have this symmetrical L shape, except, of course, we now can extend the shaded cells around the border a little bit more um, so that we don't necessarily have that symmetry that causes the problem. We don't necessarily have the dividing line um, entering and leaving the internal 8x8 grid of points on the same bishop's colour of point. Anyway, that's the conclusion. Um, you can discover a little bit more about the way that these cells will behave, or kind of generally the way they'll behave, and these will behave by um, watching my other proof on the For Cuckoo Guards solution guide, um, but we'll kind of get through those anyway. Uh, now this is going to be an unshaded cell to prevent that from being a 2x2, two two. and what we said about this cell um, at the beginning was it was either a 3 or a 5, but it could only be a 3 if... Um, it was an unshaded cell and it was describing three shaded cells on the line. So it can no longer be a three, so it must be a five. Now, let's consider this cell. Um, it must be a maximum of four. If it was any more than four, let's say it was a six, there is no way of putting six shaded cells in this column without having at least one shaded domino. We could spread them out like this, but that's only five shaded cells. So we need another one, and as soon as we put in a sixth shaded cell, we get at least one shaded domino, um, which grows out to become a shaded two by two because of the nine column that's next door. Um, so this is going to be a maximum of four. Uh, I cannot use anything today apparently. I think it's the camera. It puts me under pressure. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, right, this is one, two, three, or four. Um, so, now that it's one, two, three, or four, we know that there will be at least one unshaded domino somewhere along this column. We can spread the shaded cells out quite thinly, but even with this being a four, there will still be at least one unshaded domino. Now, this is the point where you need the secret of the filler rule set, which is that for any cell, if its coordinate, by which I mean the top cell, the top digit in its column and the first digit in its row, if its coordinate sum to 10 or more, then that cell must be shaded. So if this was a 7 and a 3, for example, that cell is going to be shaded. If it's only a 6 and a 3, and they add up to 9 or less, then um, that will be unshaded. Again, I don't think I have the most elegant proof in the world um, for that. Um, the way that I would prove it is just by kind of brute force. So imagine somewhere along here there will be a 1. Well, that 1 has already had its quota of 1 shaded cell filled um, in this 9 row, so all of the others become unshaded. Somewhere in this column there will be an 8. That's already had its quota of one unshaded cell filled in the one column, so the rest of its cells become shaded. Somewhere in the top row there will be a two, um, and it's already got its quota of shaded cells filled um, within the nine row and the eight row, i.e. where the coordinates sum to um, 11 and 10, um, and then where the coordinates sum to nine or less, it will always be unshaded. And you can keep perpetuating this, you can put a seven here, which must have shaded cells in the re remaining positions after we've got unshaded cells in the um, cells with coordinates who have um, that add up to less than 10 and so on. Hopefully that's a convincing enough proof. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail for that. But what that means once you understand that is 
you can ask, can this be another low digit? Can it be a three, for example? Well, if these two cells are unshaded, that means that these two cells must be a maximum of five, i.e. they, when you add four to them, they must reach a maximum of nine um, in order to make these unshaded. So those are a maximum of five. Well, if they're a maximum of five, when you add three to them, you're definitely not going to get at least ten. So these are going to be unshaded as well. And now we have this problem of the two by two of shaded cells. So we can never put two low digits, by which I mean one, two, three and four, next to each other um, in this row. Similarly, we can't put two high digits because once we put something like a six here, um, there will necessarily be a shaded domino somewhere in the column. It's impossible to spread them out so that there are no shaded dominoes. Um, and if we put a seven next to it, um, well, if these two digits are high enough that when you add six to them, you get to at least ten. When you add seven to them, you'll definitely get to at least ten. So those become shaded as well, and we get this problem. So effectively, along the top row and along the first column, we will always be alternating between high digits and low digits. Um, five is an exception, though, because five you can spread out in such a way that you get all of the shaded cells there, the unshaded cells there, and you never make any dominoes of shaded or unshaded cells. And so there is never any danger of growing anything out into a two by two of shadedness or unshadedness. Um, so five can go next to anything it likes if it's in this particular formation. Now, um, we have already said that this um, must be a low digit. We don't necessarily know that it's going to be four. Um, we can't put two low digits next to each other, so that must be a six, seven or eight. Now, in these five cells, we need to get the remaining three low digits and the remaining two um, high digits, but we can't put two low digits next to each other, we can't put two high digits next to each other, so we must spread the low digits out like that, and we must spread the high digits out like that. And now we can see that this five column must be correct, it must be exactly like this, because it is next to a high digit and a low digit, so there will be an unshaded domino here, there will be a shaded domino here, so we mustn't let there be any shaded dominoes in here, and therefore this is exactly the pattern that we need in the five column. Right, because we know that this is the pattern we need in the five column, we can go along here and we can say that wherever we have a shaded, uh, sorry, an unshaded um, cell in the five column, um, the coordinates must add to less than 10, so they must be a maximum of four. Wherever we have a shaded cell in the five column, the coordinates must be at least 10, so they're going to be five, six, seven, or eight. And now we can do the really fun bit, which is to find all of the coordinates that are a maximum of eight. So wherever we put coordinates, that where both the top row, the top digit in the column and the first digit in the row are low, we must always make those cells unshaded because they are never going to add up to 10 or more. Um, I think I've got all of them there, they're all going to be unshaded. And um, we can do the same thing where we have two high digits. Um, so that's going to be shaded, that's shaded. These are all shaded and all of a sudden we've done loads and loads of shading. Um, now we can use the yin-yang border rule to say that this must be connected with all of its shaded friends, so they all become shaded. Now that means that's an eight because there are eight shaded cells in the row now, that means that has to be unshaded. We connect up all of the unshaded cells in one string and that now means that is a one because there is one shaded cell in the column. We can get rid of ones there, we can get rid of eights there. And now for the really fun bit, we can now finally start to look at some more of these balancer lines. Um, these pink balancer lines, all of them have, um, at the moment, only one type of cell on them. So this has three shaded cells, so it needs an unshaded cell to do the balancing. This has three unshaded cells, so it needs a, a shaded cell to do the balancing. This needs unshaded, this needs shaded, this needs unshaded, um, and this needs shaded. Um, and yeah, suddenly we've done loads more shading. Um, we can fill this in as a two because this column is now complete. It's telling us that there are two shaded cells in the column. Um, this is no longer going to be a six because there are at least um, seven 
shaded cells in the column. And now we can look a little bit more at this brown line. Now, ever since we put a five there, we discovered effectively that there are going to be four shaded cells that sum to 20, four unshaded cells that sum to 20. Um, I've just realised that's not the place to look next, so let's just bank that information and come back to it. Um, it's been a while since I did a practice um, run through of this. Uh, perhaps should have done that before hitting record. Never mind. Anyway, um, these purple lines are the four cell purple lines, so all of them except that one, are effectively like three cell arrows. Um, if you've done lots of arrow sudokus, these digits must all be different, so they're a minimum of one, two, and three. So that's um, going to be at least six, seven, eight, or nine. It is going to be six, seven, eight, or nine. We also know that seven, eight, and nine can never go on in any of these cells because if we put a seven there, once we've added one and two, this becomes a two digit number. So we can ask where do seven, eight, and nine go in box five? Well, most of these cells are on kind of three cell arrows, well, three cell lines. Um, and are places where we cannot place 7, 8 or 9, so they all become 7, 8, 9. We get that triple there. Uh, we can be a little bit more specific because we've now got a 7, 8, 9 triple in the column, and within that triple, um, the 9 must go there or there, so that is not a 9. I'll just take those out for now. Let's also ask where 7, 8 and 9 go in this column. Um, again, all of these cells are cells that are a maximum of 6, and therefore the remaining cells are 7, 8 or 9. This cannot be an 8. Now let's return to this um, brown line. Um, so we know that, um, oh, actually, no, it's still not quite ready. Still not quite ready to, to do the brown line because the next trick is really, really cool. We can analyse these nine cells. Now, what do they add up to? They add up to a maximum of 24 because that these are the same as that. These whoops, are the same as that, and these are the same as that. So these nine cells are the same as those three yellow cells in the middle, which are um, a maximum of seven, eight, and nine, which sum to 24. But we can say that these three cells, they're in the same column, so they're a minimum of one, two, and three, which is six. These three cells are exactly the same, they're a minimum of six, so these three must be a maximum of 12. Okay, now, Finally, we can come back to this brown line, um, because if these are a maximum of 12, how can that ever be a 7? We know that the brown line, uh, the shaded cells must sum to 20, but the unshaded cells must sum to 20. So if that's a 7, and that's a maximum of 12, then that's going to be a, ma a maximum of 19, and that does not work. So that has to be a 9, we can take 9 out of there, and now we do actually know that these three sum to exactly 11, which means that these... Um, sum to a maximum of 13, which is a maximum of a 1, 2, 3 triple and a 1, 2, 4 triple. So I'll notate it like that for now. Um, we also know that that's going to be a 6, 7, 8 or 9. I could have done that earlier because it's three different digits um, summing to one single digit total, except it's not a 9 now because of that 9. Now, um, where does a 6 go in this column? Well, in the unshaded cells, we've already got 15. We've got a 7-8 pair, which sums to 15, so these two sum to 5. They can't be a 6 and a minus 1, so the 6 must go in one of these three cells. But it must be able to be accommodated by a, a sufficiently higher digit in this kind of um, arrowhead cell, if you think of these as three-cell arrows. And the only one that can accommodate it is this one. If it is a 9, this therefore is a 6, this therefore is a 1-2 pair, and actually that 2 tells us which way round. Uh, that reminds me, actually, there is something that we've been able to do for a while, which is place a 1 here. Why? Because all of the other rows have at least two shaded cells in them, so we can get rid of 1s from those positions. We can also get rid of ones from there and twos from there. Um, right, uh, what is the next thing to do? Um, <laughs> give me a moment. Um, okay, yes, five and six. Sorry about that. Um, it's been a while. Uh, five and six in box five, um, just by pure options, must go in these positions. So the remaining cells in box five are one, two, three, and four. But we know that uh, these two cells must sum to 5, 
to add to the 15 to make 20 for the brown line. So if those add to 5, then those must add to 5. So if we know those add to 5, then when we add this third cell on this um, purple line, it will add to either 6, 8 or 9. The only option that actually works there is 8. So it must be an 8 with a 3 there, and this must be a 1-4 pair, which means this must be a 2-3 pair. 3 comes out of there and goes into there. Um, 8 comes out of there. Um, the 7-9 pair makes this an 8, um, makes this a 7. Um, oh yes, well, as soon as we put the 1 in there, we could have done all of this shading, which means we can now complete the 8 column with this shaded cell. Um, now this can no longer be a 2 because there are at least um, 3 shaded cells in the row, so that becomes a 4, that becomes a 2, that means we can finish off the unshading for this row and the shading for this row. 8 comes out of there. Um, and... What's the next trick we can do? Ah, yes, right. This is the, the probably the last time in the puzzle where, where you might um, get stuck. Because one factor of yin-yang that we haven't considered at all up to this point is connectivity. Uh, well, barely considered it because it's mostly been focused on avoiding these two by twos. But actually, we have two islands of shaded cells here that are not yet connected. So... <laughs> We must um, therefore connect these cells together, which means this has become a 7, describing the 7 shaded cells in the, um, in the row. So this now becomes a 5-6 pair. Um, 2 comes out of there. Um, this 2 means this is 3. This is 2. Um, 3 never goes on a... Uh, with with two other cells adding to seven, that's impossible. Uh, well, once we've got three plus five at a minimum, that's at least eight. So actually, there is only one way of completing this line. It must be like that. Um, similarly, uh, well, this becomes a six now, so those become eight. That's at least one, and that's at most nine. So that's exactly what it must be. Um, three comes out of there. Um, now, this this is not an eight anymore. This is a 1-4 pair, we get a 1-4 pair, that, that's um, the only option for this um, balance line is now this. This 1 has resolved this, um, and we've also got this resolved as well, and this 7 just here. Um, now this 7 has resolved the top row, um, and that 6 means that we can fill that in as unshaded, so to complete the 3 we need this to be shaded. So for connectivity, we need all of these to be unshaded, which means this becomes a 3, this becomes a 4, and then we just have a little bit of ambiguity. It doesn't now matter whether we make this shaded or this shaded. Um, we will still have full connectivity and we won't have any 2 by 2s So the rest from this point is pretty much just normal Sudoku with two... Um, hold on, that's an 8. That's annoying me. Um, two little kind of disambiguating lines just here and here. Um, in the interest of conciseness, I'm actually going to stop there because I think the rest, if you've managed to follow everything that's happened so far, there's no question that you'd be able to um, complete the rest of the puzzle from here. Um, like I said, mostly just normal Stoku with a little bit of disambiguation. Um, but I will leave that to you to work out for yourselves. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the um, solution guide and the kind of slight origin story at the beginning as well. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments, um, especially whether you think the break-in is fair, because it is a very, very difficult break-in. Um, but I think it's very, very cool once you've got it, and you can use that to um, get all of this fun purple. I'm, I'm going to stop tooting my own horn. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content, and I will see you in the next video.